And from the very onset, Mr. Speaker, let me say this. While there is need to engage in robust, robust debating of a bill of this nature, yet, Mr. Speaker, we must also understand that the process that is being done by Senate right now must be done in such a manner as to ensure that, Mr. Speaker, it is dealt with in an expeditious manner without unnecessary bottlenecks, Mr. Speaker, due regard being had to the fact that uh, the allocation of these uh, resources, Mr. Speaker, are needed to ensure that uh, counties are functional and that there is sensitivity in our operations to the needs of the people of Kenya. And Mr. Speaker, that such can be dispensed with so that uh, the resources that need to go to the counties are not unduly held. Because Mr. Speaker, a delay, a long delay in dealing with such business, Mr. Speaker, at Senate would necessarily mean that uh, there is a delay in the functions being resourced or being supported, Mr. Speaker. I want to draw, Mr. Speaker, your attention to Section 5V of the Division of the Revenue uh, Bill 2023, the fact that uh, national government continues to sorry bear shortfalls in revenue in any given financial year, while county governments receive their full allocation despite the budget cuts affecting the national government entities. Mr. Speaker, the, this provision, having been pronounced in this bill, clearly shows the spirit with which uh, the national government has been dealing with county government insofar as the uh, allocation of resources are concerned, Mr. Speaker. It shows that the national government has gone out of its way to ensure that county governments receive the resources that are due to them in spite of the serious budget cuts that have been done affecting the entities and the functions of the national government, Mr. Speaker. Does that portend good faith or bad faith? Mr. Speaker, in my very humble um, uh, proposal, it shows very good faith from the national government insofar as uh, allocating resources to county government is concerned, Mr. Speaker. I also want to draw uh, our colleagues to the principles set out under Article 203, Mr. Speaker, that have been put into serious consideration before this bill was drawn, Mr. Speaker. Out of those uh, stipulations, Mr. Speaker, you will find there are considerations of national interest, Mr. Speaker, what must be provided for the public debt also, Mr. Speaker. I think it is now common knowledge that our national government is ridden with debt, Mr. Speaker. This bill has ensured that there is provision for that debt, Mr. Speaker. In, indeed, Mr. Speaker, if you look at how the surplus of a budget is supposed to be managed in the event that national government managed to get a surplus of revenue, then, Mr. Speaker, you will find that that surplus has been assigned directly to handle debt. Why, Mr. Speaker? Because when a country is ridden with debt, it continues to be a very big risk to the operations of that nation. And that is why it's important, Mr. Speaker, that the Constitution has also provided that any surplus must then be tackled or applied towards uh, reducing the debt. But if we look at the current uh, Division of Revenue Bill, Mr. Speaker, there are two things that one must consider. Does it meet the constitutional uh, stipulations Mr. Speaker, I would say yes. And I would draw your attention to uh, Section 6 of the Division of Revenue uh, Bill. Uh, the calculations of the equitable share that is supposed to be allocated for year 2023 to 2024 is based on the last audited account of 2019-2020. That is 1.673715 trillion, Mr. Speaker. This is the last audited account and approved by National Assembly, Mr. Speaker. So the reference to that specific audited account of 2019 to 2020 is in good order, Mr. Speaker, and is the one that is constitutionally allowed. If you look, Mr. Speaker, also at uh, Article uh, 203, sub-Article, sub-Article, uh, sub-Article 2, Mr. Speaker, it also stipulates that the allocation 
cannot be less than uh, 15 percent. If you look at the current allocation of 385 billion, Mr. Speaker, this allocation stands at 23.5, Mr. Speaker, which is approximately 9.5 percent above the stipulated uh, constitutional, uh, constitutional provision, Mr. Speaker. So in my view, Mr. Speaker, this allocation of budget is practical, it is reasonable, it meets the legal stipulation, Mr. Speaker, and nothing should hold it away from being voted in. And I would take this opportunity to persuade my colleagues on the other side, Mr. Speaker, to consider this to be a good bill and to pass it just the way the National Assembly passed it, to pass it, Mr. Speaker, and accept this allocation of 385 billion because it will give an opportunity to Kenyans to live within their own means, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there is a way um, we could uh, say that allocation be done beyond 385, and then the funds are not available for disbursement to the counties, Mr. Speaker. For the last few uh, months, everybody is crying, begging the minister for, for finance to release funds to the county, Mr. Speaker. Does it make sense then to draw a bill which states big, big figures, Mr. Speaker, without considering the fact of the fiscal capacity? If you look at uh, Article 202, a sabbatical E. It talks about the phys fiscal capacity of the county government. And in the same breath, Mr. Speaker, we must consider the phys fiscal capacity of the national government to disperse the resources. For this reason, Mr. Speaker, uh, this allocation uh, is equitable. It meets the legal stipulation. It meets the accounting stipulation. And Mr. Speaker, I would support this bill and ask my colleagues to avoid a situation or a trap of sending it to mediation because it would elongate the process and continue to deny the resources to counties that are required to move to the counties. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I support the Division of Revenue Bill 2023. Senator Gataya. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving this uh, opportunity 